Is there anything that any of you guys have experienced that you've had a board where it's it's felt bad off the start, where you've tried anything different, or is there anything that like personal experience you guys can like share? What construction do you think is best for lo local spots, California? So honeycomb is a very balanced feel. Kind of sits in the middle of either side of the ride number scale. That's honeycomb, that's alpha, and that's also vapor core. Vapor core is a, is a carbon hollow construction that we make in Huntington Beach. It kind of sits right in the middle of the ride number scale. Super lightweight, really resilient as far as the, the rebound of the fin and how it feels. But yeah, for an, for an everyday starting point, honeycomb, vapor core, and like alpha is kind of right in that realm. Do you have people that have more front foot and back foot? Mm -hmm. where I'm a little more, more heavy back foot surfer, yep. kind of like a stiffer fin. Yeah. Where black sticks are obviously more flexy. Right? Correct. Yep. So. Back foot versus being heavy on uh, your front foot, it's definitely a difference there. Muscle memory with black sticks. The V2 foil puts you at parts of the wave way quicker than you think you'll get there. Yeah. So it does take a little getting used to, but once you harness that, like Craig Anderson, yeah. he rides, he's kind of an anomaly. He rides a V2 foil and everything from pumping waves to smaller waves, but he's so used to how the foil feels coming off the bottom and releasing off the top that it, for him, being front foot heavy, it works for him. Yeah, and then you look at the coffin, uh, like Connor, coffin, very back footed, fiberglass fin, really stepping into it, and has no problem riding that fin and everything. Those guys are like, obviously at an elite level, but for a guy that has maybe a two to three board quiver, and that wants maybe two to three fins to kind of cover places he surfs from creek to lowers to maybe the day at San O where he wants to spike like like the neutral perfect for everywhere kind of. it's a great starting point like new baseline. board yeah. baseline for sure f6 or f8 or f4 if it's a small it's a great place to start to feel out the board and then kind of go from there if the board feels like it's too stiff not turning as sharp as you'd like you'd go towards the pivot side of the templates. If it feels like it's too loose, loose trucks, you have speed wobbles, you go to a raked fin. With the raked out fin, it's gonna be like if the equivalent of like skateboard tight trucks. You get on that and kind of lean into it. It's like, oh, like the radius is like more drawn out, right? For like how you're gonna turn. But if you move to the opposite end of the spectrum with the pivot, like loose trucks, right? Yeah. You lean and it's like the right. transfer of, you know, it just, it goes quicker. I got a question for Ian. What fins do you look at the best or most? It kind of depends really. Like if I'm on a surf trip somewhere and the waves are pumping, I'll ride fiberglass only. I like the coffin fins or the Jordy Smith fin. Both are super rakey and not much flex. Like if you're holding the fin, you could kind of like push the tip and see like how much it kind of goes back and forth. So like a stiffer fin for better waves. But then at home, I really like to mi uh, mix it up. And that's like one thing that's like the coolest about what they got with like their full range. Like you can really transform a board to work in really like any condition by switching up fins. I like yeah. the neutral one for around town or mm -hmm. even like some mushy beach breaks or stuff like that. But I think for the most part, getting to like a neutral and especially in the uh, vapor core, they're so lightweight, like no extra drag or anything weird, like and heavy in your board in the tail and around town. It's pretty nice to have that on those like average days where you feel like you can just pick up your normal board that would work great and make it work in average surf. I've been a medium guy forever. And then a friend about a year ago goes, dude, you gotta ride larger fins. I fit squarely weight wise in the medium, mm -hmm. okay? He's like, I ride large fins. Mm -hmm. And he weighs less than me. So I'm like, okay, there must be something to it. I've been riding large fins for a year, AM larges. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is cool. Seems like I'm really holding better. But then a friend of mine goes, dude, you're getting stuck with those bigger fins. So now I'm like back to the AM1. So it's kind of a scenario. So a lot box. of that could be template wise. Template change. That raked of a fin right in the AM2 at your weight can just be too much fin. So if you went to something that was more neutral, something that was a little more upright, that's gonna give you that maneuverability to get through that bottom section and not get bogged down. And not sacrifice drive. Yeah. You still have the bigger surface area to 
create drive. And the smaller center fin too is always a, a caveat there too, yeah, the trailer. That's, that's why I went yeah. to because kind of those things kind of migrated yeah. to the two plus, it's not a two plus, but yeah, it's yeah. a yeah. bit smaller. It's smaller. That fin seemed to be a really good answer for a lot of situations around here. For sure. So I went to the AM2, but now I'm back to the M1, so. We do have a, a new Mayhem medium large that is in splits the sizes. It's the only fin we've ever done. It's like pro surfer size. It's a rake style template, so it would feel similar to what you're used to with the Merrick large, but surface area as a whole is just brought down just a little bit, splits the difference. So that could be something good to try. I, I ride a, a 185 pounds and I ride a larger fin yep. all the time. Does that make a difference on the if I went to a smaller fin, would it be not as flexible for me? Or maybe not flex, flexible? no. It would be, a, it could potentially feel a little bit looser, but it depends on the size of the board. So you could be 180 and you could be riding a 6.2 Seaside, or you could be riding a 6.0 shortboard. The fin at that size is going to act completely different to where the bigger board, more foam in the water, thicker rail, the, the bigger surface area fin is going to help your maneuverability and get that thing going where the smaller fin it could be overpowered even though it could potentially be in your weight range so b board if you're if you're surfing leaders not the biggest fan of it but if you're in your leader range for your ability and your size you can stay true to the fin but if you're surfing a 40 liter board and you're only 150 pounds you're going to want a bit bigger of a fin in it just to keep that thing doing what it's supposed to I yeah. personally like i got a board that was a little bit too big for me and it just kind of felt like stiff didn't really feel lively and i'm same weight range like 185 195 i went for a smaller size fin and it just completely changed the, the board you know yeah. and i was like oh, okay like if i drop down a little bit it kind of negates the size of the board and the rail line and all those things come into play but and especially yeah. with the bigger boards that's where the foil of the fin is really going to come into play where the board if it feels like it's tracking weird or like really one lined like you're on a roller coaster yeah. add a v2 foil like a black stick it really adds that smooth fluid rail to rail transition to get it to go top to bottom a little easier especially with the bigger boards these are called the scimitars the ones that scimitar, scimitar, yeah. 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 So yeah it went from so it it went <laughs> evolution is vector we first yeah. put the inside foil we're like wow that made a huge difference. And then we went to the 3-2 that actually had cant toe inside the fan. Yeah. And then from the 3-2 we did, uh, I think it was a 3-2-1. 3-2-1. Yep, three, two, one. Yeah. And then we did the Scimitar, and then we did the Solus. Right. And that's really the evolution. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then that factory blew up on me. I lost all the tools. <laughs> and then we started focusing on CT ladders. I still got a set, so I'm happy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we're bringing it back, but we're going to bring it back in a much more scientific way. I've got a question on the vapor. Yeah. It's, it's, I like it because it's stiff, right? What's it compared to all fiberglass, like control series? Mm. Do, you, do you think one's stiffer than the other in the recoil flex? Yeah, I would say, you know, the, the vapor cork for sure has a has a much faster resonance, so it'll come back quicker. And the fiberglass on a whole is stiffer than the vapor core. It's weird though, the vapor core in your hand will feel really stiff, but when you put it in a board and you flex it, yeah. you can tell for some reason it doesn't flex very well in the hand. Okay. And once you put it in a board, it, it does have some, you know, I would say the you know how far it moves under 30 pounds of force is is more than what you'd see in a fiberglass. The new Mayhem quads. That's a really cool template. And I was reading kind of about it that you guys were almost, wasn't it kind of like you're doing like almost like a twin fin with? Yeah, so it stemmed from his evil twin plus one. Okay. And then the round nose fish retro, the quad fish. He wanted to take that template that is from the original 96 and create a quad option on it out of it so we scaled the rear put an 80 20 foil on the rear and now uh, the box placement for those boards are teed up exactly for that for that quad i think it was originally called a two plus two right yeah, yeah. twin plus yeah. yeah twin plus two or two, yeah. yeah had the stretch quads oh yeah those and are good really love them and i guess you guys don't produce well, them. nope no, they're right next to you they're, they're pink bright, ones they're bright pink super yeah. unique foil stretch um has his own front fin foil it kind of stemmed from the v2 a little bit different it's not going anywhere. It's a staple in the line. It's actually getting a new color later this summer. Do you go more in depth into the foils? Like a 50, 50, 80, 20? When it comes to quad rears, it's all, the biggest thing there is box relation from the stringer. So as your quad rears are closer to the stringer, you wanna go symmetrical foil because it acts more like a center fin, so 50, 50. If you're way out on the rail, flat foils acts more like a side fin. If it's more neutral quad rear, you go 80, 20. 
What's your most neutral twin fin? Because there's so many, I mean, obviously everyone started getting twin fins in the last yeah. year. They're really fun. A twin With twin fin, fin or a twin? Yeah. Twin. Just, just true twin. twin? Uh, there's so many twins just because of how yeah. popular they got. T1 yes. has got some rake to it. So Son of Cobra, ENs kind of flirts with that. The Zach Flores is kind of right there. To go really upright, that's the T2, that's the Aquila. The AMT is super upright. You, you get yeah. the more upright, that's your more performance twin. That's your twin that's going top to bottom. You're almost performing more on that type of twin. If you get into the keel shape, that's your down the line, cruisy, you know, flowing type twin. That would be your Almeric keel, Rasta keel, K2 keel. Yeah, maybe the ENs for like a true twin. Kind of. Yeah, that's probably, yeah. That's your hybrid. As far as twin plus one though, a twin with trailer, T1 is probably your, the most all around. Right. So you're most similar to a thruster, to a typical thruster setup. It's just gonna have the looseness and the flow of a twin, a little more stability. Big fan of the ENT two plus one. Mm -hmm. so what I've noticed is that they kind of flare out. To the yeah, side. so. Yeah. What, what is that? That's not really like a feature on any of that. Correct, it's a cant thing. So they're they're more splayed out, cant. So what that does is it rolls on rail a little, little easier. You sacrifice a little bit of get up and go speed. So most twins are at four degrees, pretty upright, where thrusters are six and a half, those aim AMTs. The original, if you're riding the gray ones, they were at nine. The new green grays are at seven and a half. And that's something Britt wanted to change just to kind of bring it back down to earth a little bit more. Those, yeah, the yeah. nines are, you'll definitely yeah. notice a difference so, there. So that, when they're that splayed, it makes, that board would love to be on rail all the time. Moving yep. consistently, never flat. Correct. Once you go flat, that board's just gonna stop moving. So that was another reason why Britt wanted to go to the seven and a half was it makes it just more user-friendly. It makes it more of a normal mm -hmm. twin fin or twin plus one. Of Rather than seven and, a half. seven and a half as well. We do have a thruster in the line, the Tecoro's at nine as well. That's the only thruster that we have that's really yeah. canted out. Yeah, the Tech Flex definitely geared towards better surf. One thing cool too is we sell the quad rears a la carte. So I'm a huge advocate when I do go to a quad is I just keep my favorite thruster front going and then I just, just get the correct size quad rear and then just mess with the foil of the rear depending on how the box placement is in relation to the stringer. I've, bought, I've got the Machado Kivit, I've got the John John, I've got the Rostovich. I can't surf like any of those guys. I mean, these fins, <laughs> We all wish we could. Yeah, we can't I either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets you close enough to thinking like you do. Yeah. You know, that's what, as long as you have a yeah. smile on your face, yeah. you're, you're winning.